Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with my full review of the Hi-Fi Man's Fanar True Wireless Earphone. And it's been a few months since I did my first impressions, but because of the cold weather the last couple weeks, I'm finally getting caught up on my reviews a little bit. Anyway, this was loaned to me by Hi-Fi Man. It currently sells for $499 and it is a TWS earphone. And I wasn't even sure what TWS stood for, but it turns out it's True Wireless System according to the Hi-Fi Man website. And uh, basically what that means is built into these little earphones you basically have a Bluetooth receiver in each of these a digital to analog converter in each of these uh, a headphone amp in each of these and then the drivers that actually produce the sound in each of these this, uh, act, this also includes uh, ANC or automatic noise cancelling uh, the, these are rated to be waterproof or water resistant to IPX5 and the DAC in these is Hi-Fi Man's own um, Himalaya R2R DAC. Uh, these have three different modes and the, they affect the runtime of these and this is up two times. So, if I say four hours, it means up to four hours, which basically the louder you play it, it could reduce that. So that's at a moderate volume. So anyway, these have three different modes and you change the mode just by tapping on the, uh, no, actually you have to put your finger on the left earphone for three seconds and hold it. And it will actually tell you that it's changing mode. You'll hear it in both headphones or earphones and you'll know you're in the next mode. So anyway, the three different modes are Hi-Fi mode, which is going to give you your best sound, and that has a runtime up to four hours. You have your ANC mode, or automatic noise canceling mode, that runs up to six hours, and then you have your transparency mode, which runs up to seven hours, and I'll talk a little bit about each of those modes in a few minutes. Uh, these, uh, according to Hi-Fi Man, have a transmission distance of 15 meters, but I found out if you're using them in the house and if you're going through a wall, and I'm just talking about your basic 2x4 wall with a sheet of half-inch drywall on each side, it's going to reduce that down to about 10 meters. And if you go through a couple of walls, you're probably going to lose your signal completely. Uh, these come in this case, and this is actually a charging case, and you hook your USB cable up to these. Uh, it's a USB-C connection, and it plugs into the back, and there's actually a battery in the charging case, so you can uh, leave them in while you charge it, or you can, and it'll charge the case and the batteries together, or you can charge the case. Well, anyway, you can recharge the earphones three times from the case. So you have this charged up, and you can uh, put them back in here and recharge them three to, up to three times without ever having to plug this back into a USB charger, which is very cool. Um, they have touch control functions, which all the functions are controlled either by tapping or holding uh, each of the earphones. You just barely have to touch it. You just put a finger on it and you know you can um, do everything from pausing or your source or jumping up to the next track or switching your modes or uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with these. Um, I, I'll roll in here and show you these a little closer and um, they you can't put them backwards because they only fit into the case in one way and I'll uh, pull them out and give you a closer look at it here um, the uh, back of these is actually carbon fiber you can see that there on the back and then your ear tips uh, these actually come with eight sets of the rubber air ear tips I think there's um, I'm not sure if there's more than if all eight are different or if there are uh, a couple of them are the same but anyway uh, you can see that up close 
So anyway, I did want to mention the eight sets of ear tips, and they come in the box. They're actually down in the bottom. Uh, the box is about so big, and it's got a foam insert that these fit into. And if you pull that foam out, there's actually another foam insert down in the bottom that has the extra ear, uh, the rubber ear tips. And uh, I tried several of them, and to be honest, only the largest worked for me. So I don't know if it's my ears or what it is, and I'm not an expert by a long shot on IEMs. I don't use IEMs very often. Excuse me, I'm more of a full-size headphone, full-size desktop amp kind of guy. So um, I'm going to do something a little different tonight than most people. Most people would compare these to other IEMs. I haven't done a lot of IEM reviews, and you'll know that if you've been watching my channel. So what I'm going to do is compare this to the sound of some of the really popular Hi-Fi Man headphones, because I've reviewed about 12 hi-fi man headphones and there's a million of them out there and a, most people have heard a hi-fi man headphone and I'm gonna tell you I spent some time finding out exactly which hi-fi man headphone these sound like and they do sound really close to one but I'll talk about that more in a minute so anyway back to the ear tips um, I had to use the largest ear tips that came with these to get a good seal and basically, if you don't get a good seal, you have no, very little mid bass and no sub bass. You have to have a good seal in your ear canal to get sub bass. Once you do get a good seal, these have really good sub bass, really good extension, and really solid mid bass. But if you don't, if they don't seal, you just don't get it. So the only way I was able to get a good seal was with the largest ear tips, and that may be just me, the way my ears are. But here's the problem I think I'm running into, is you can see by the size of that, that it limits how far this can go into your ear canal. And I just feel like they're not, I'm not able to get them in far enough that I'm getting a good seal with anything other than the largest tips and that's what's on these right now these are the largest tips so anyway I did um, with large tips I did get a good seal and getting a really good base but I have to mess with them a little bit and you know um, basically move them around and try them and you know when you have a good seal when it blocks out outside sound but then also, if you have music playing, you know you've got a good seal because all of a sudden there's just very good bass there that was non-existent before you got the good seal. So um, that's really super important. If you try these and there's no bass, especially no sub bass, that's the problem. You don't have a good seal in your ear canal, but I... I'm assuming it's that way with any IEM. I've reviewed a few of them and that was the same case with them. So anyway, uh, before I get into the sound of these, I wanted to mention what equipment I used in reviewing these. Give me just a second, please. So anyway, um, doing my review, my Bluetooth source was my HP desktop computer. Um, it's fairly new, a couple of years old. Um, I'm running Windows 10. I'm using the media player, Windows media player, and I'm listening to CDs that were ripped in WAV format, uh, which is a lossless format. I actually prefer it to, uh, what's the other one? I can't think of the other one right now, but anyway, uh, they are in WAV format. So, um, and like I said a few minutes ago, the comparisons I'm doing is to the full-size Hi-Fi Man headphones I have because I just don't have any IEMs that are in a similar price range or even wire. I don't have any wireless IEMs and I don't have any that are on a level of these to compare. So I dragged out some of my uh, Hi-Fi Man headphones and compared them to this to see w if this sounds similar to any of them. So at least I can give you that much. I can tell you 
that if you've got a Hi-Fi Man headphone, how this is going to sound compared to that. So the four Hi-Fi Man headphones that I used to compare to this, and I didn't go any lower in the line because it was, wasn't necessary, and I didn't go any higher up the line because it wasn't necessary, but the four I used were the Hi-Fi Man EF, or, um, oh, hang on. I, let me back up a second. When I was uh, back to the equipment, the full-size headphones I used, I ran them all off of the Hi-Fi Man EF400 uh, DAC amp combination, which also uses Hi-Fi Man's uh, Himalaya DAC. So that kind of puts the two on even ground. They're both using R2R decks and they're both using, you know, built into these and then the Hi-Fi Man EF400 with Hi-Fi Man's Himalaya deck and that. So the four headphones I used were the Edition XS by Hi-Fi Man, the Ananda Stealth, the Aria Stealth, and the HE1000 Stealth. Okay, excuse the little break there, I kind of lost my spot. So anyway, getting into the sound of these earphones. Uh, the first thing that really stands out to me is that the clarity and detail is outstanding. These things are super clean and super detailed. Just resolution that is up there with really good full-size headphones. Uh, the... Um, extension both in the bass and the treble is excellent and once again that totally depends on the fit you got to have that tight seal in your air canal and when you do these actually extend very low into the sub bass and have a lot of weight to the bass it's not for bass heads I'm not going to say this is a bass head IEM or earphone but they have the same amount of extension as some of the better Hi-Fi Man headphones. Uh, the bass is punchy, it's tight, it's well controlled, very high quality bass and they go up as far as I can hear in the treble. I don't hear any roll off on either end. Uh, the sound stage is fairly large and that's compared to a full size open back headphone. I, like I said, I don't have a huge amount of experience with IEM, so uh, compared to the many full-size open back headphones I'd listened to, I'd say the, uh, the sound stage isn't super wide, but it's kind of in the middle. Uh, and then um, getting into the actual comparisons to these four headphones and all once again by Hi-Fi Man and all using the Hi-Fi Man EF400 amp deck with the Himalaya uh, R2R deck. So comparing these to the Edition XS, I'll start at the bottom first. The Edition XS, uh, very nice headphone and a year ago I rated it best headphone under $500. Um, these definitely have more detail than the Edition XS. The Edition XS actually sounds quite veiled and lacking in clarity compared to these. These, without a doubt, out detail the Edition XS. The Edition XS is a little bit warmer and a little bit bassier, but the bass is actually tighter and better controlled with these earphones. Um, I guess I'll jump up to the Ananda Stealth. Okay, even the Ananda Stealth, which in my opinion, I prefer the Ananda Stealth over the Edition XS, even though they're about the same price now. I believe these still even out detail the Ananda Stealth, and the Ananda Stealth has very good detail. These are even cleaner and more detailed than the Ananda Stealth. The tone balance is pretty close. I would say these actually have a little bit more bass than the Ananda Stealth if you have them sealed up properly. Okay, and then uh, jumping up to the Aria Stealth. That's the headphone that I would say matches these very closely. These actually have a very similar sound to the Ananda Stealth, or the Aria Stealth. Um, the Aria Stealth was 
Compared to the older Aria, the version 1 or the version 2 has more bass and more dynamic and more impact and that's basically the way these sound and it has more detail. The Aria Stealth is very detailed and these have a detail level very similar. They have a very similar tone balance to the Aria Stealth and they actually have a very similar um, sound stage. The Aria Stealth, the one place where it did take a step back from the first two and I didn't I never reviewed the second aria the version two but I did review the first one and it had a huge wide sound stage well the aria stealth did lose a little bit of width it became more dynamic more weight to the bass and more detailed but lost that width well these actually have a very similar width from my experience and I'm sure it depends on your ears and you know person to person how they fit all that but to me the sound stage at about the same width as the Aria Stealth pretty decent but not super wide but um, very uh, very good imaging very pinpoint you know you can locate all the instruments and these have very good separation of instruments just like the Aria Stealth so um, I would say these, if you like the sound of the Aria Stealth and you want a pair of IEMs that sound the same, this is the way to go. They just sound almost, I was jumping back and forth last night and they sound very, very similar. Okay, then I jumped up and compared these to the HE1000 Stealth and these fall a little bit short of the sound of the uh, HE-1000 Stealth. To me, the HE-1000 out-detailed these a little bit. Um, and the biggest difference, though, is the HE-1000 has that very large sound stage like the original Aria. And the HE-1000 just has a much bigger, more open sound than these. So, um, the similarity was lost there at that point. Just uh, these do not have that huge open sound of the HE-1000 stuff. Tone balance is actually not that far off and these are very dynamic but I did want to mention that that depends entirely on the mode you use too. So um, they have three modes. The first mode with the shortest runtime is Hi-Fi and that is the mode I used exclusively. Okay, the next mode is the ANC or noise canceling mode and if I turn that on I've got a headache in 30 seconds. Something about automatic noise canceling and the way that works is it basically uses a microphone to listen to the sound around you then creates an equal and opposite sound in the headphones to cancel out that sound. Okay, well, I've only tried a few active noise canceling headphones and every one of them gives me an almost instant headache and it's that way with these. I turn on the automatic noise canceling and I can't listen to it for more than 30 seconds. My, I feel like my skull is going to collapse. That's just, it's like I've got negative pressure inside my head and I feel like my head is caving in. It's just a terrible feeling. I absolutely hate it and will never, probably never use automatic noise canceling with any headphone. Besides from that, you lose a lot of the dynamics of the sound. It loses a lot of the punchiness and it's still clear and all that, but it just, it just sounds softer, the sound. And but like I said, I absolutely hate automatic noise canceling. Then the third mode is what's called the transparency mode, and basically, I don't. I'm guessing that it extends the battery life by reducing the amplifier output because it just it loses the sound, loses all its dynamics, all its punch. It just sounds really flat and basically sounds the same is if you listen to a hard to drive planar magnetic headphone on a amp that just doesn't have enough power. That's the way they sound in that mode. It just sounds like you're listening with an amp that doesn't have enough power to push them and don't like that either. So all my listening was done in the hi-fi mode which and I couldn't tell you if it'll last four hours or not because it's hi-fi man says up to four hours. 
I can't listen to IEMs for anywhere close to that. Within 15 minutes, my ears start bothering me. I don't like anything in my ear canals. That's why I don't review a lot of IEMs. I just can't listen to them for any length of time. Within 15 minutes, my ears start itching and hurting and they just bother me. They, it's just an irritation to me. I don't like it. So like I said, I'm a full size headphone guy. But Hi-Fi Man sent me these and, you know, I wanted to give them a fair shot and they sound beautiful. They, they, they sound incredible. I mean, they sound almost exactly the same as the Hi-Fi Man. Uh, Aria Stealth hooked up to the Hi-Fi Man EF400 amp deck. And when you think about it, okay, even now, even that now that those are on sale, you're looking at $8.99 for the headphone and $3.99 for the uh, amp deck. So you're looking at what, $9 for $1,300 to buy that combination. Where this, you've got your amp, your deck, your, your earphone, everything all in one for $4.99. So you're getting the same basic sound for $4.99. They would cost $1,300 buying the Aria Stealth and the EF400 amp. And that's at the sale prices. Those used to be $600 for the amp and $1,600 for the headphones. So, um, you know, a couple of years ago, that, that was only, what, a year, two years ago? It would have cost you, what, $6 and $1,600, $2,200 to get this kind of sound that you're getting for $4.99. So with this, all you need is a Bluetooth source and you're ready to go. And also I want to mention with Windows 10, all I had to do is turn these on and it linked up with my computer. I, it took like 30 seconds, no, um, no messing with it, no problems whatsoever. Just linked up instantly with the Bluetooth. So uh, anyway, do I recommend these? If you are looking for an IEM and you like the sound, of the Hi-Fi Man Aria Stealth, you will probably love these. Um, you know, that's all I can say. If if that if you want the sound of an Aria Stealth from a earphone with Bluetooth and I, I don't know about the noise canceling. I guess a lot of people like it. I don't like it. Something about it just gives me an instant headache. So not even gonna talk about that anymore. Anyway, um, yeah. Highly recommend it, these if you want an IEM that sounds like the Aria Stealth because they're almost exactly very, very close in sound. So that's it. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. This is William from the Headphone Experience. I think I said that at the beginning. Uh, if this video helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, the Headphone Experience on Facebook is up to 28.8 thousand members. We've added seven, 770 members in about the last 18 days, I think. Um, just incredible amount of people joining up with that group. So um, a lot of great people, lots of great information. You're all welcome to join us over there. And uh, once again, thanks for watching my video.